This material looks at paradigms in research and specifically at our ontology, our epistemology and the choices we make there that affect our, cho our choice of research design or methodology and how these also influence the kinds of questions we ask. So let's start at the very beginning. These are some things for us to think about. What is the purpose of research? What are the main characteristics that define research as an activity? And why would and when would we undertake research? Think about your discipline. What is the value or the point of research in your discipline? And why would we undertake it? What would we be trying to do? What would be our purpose? There are different kinds of research for different reasons. Research can be broadly said to fall into three or four main paradigms, which you will find more of in the Goober and Lincoln reading in Toolkit A and also in the Grant and Giddings reading for this week. These paradigms are different understandings of the purpose of research, why we do it and how we do it. So we have research, for example, that seeks to find out a truth about the world around us. We have research that tries to understand socially constructed realities in different ways. We have research that tries to transform or change society. So you need to think a little bit about what kind of research you're doing and why you're doing it. When we do research, we are often working within a paradigm, usually unconsciously at first. Our paradigm, according to Guber and Lincoln, can be defined as the basic belief system or worldview that guides you not only in the choices of your method, but in ontologically and epistemologically fundamental ways. Grant and Giddings define these as research traditions that provide a positive force for commitment, providing the would-be researcher with a framework for making order out of the chaos of social life. So, to work out your paradigm, you can ask yourself, with your proposed research project in mind, these kinds of questions. What is the form and nature of reality? What can we know about the world around us? This is ontology. On the basis of what we think the nature of reality is like, how then can we come to know that world? Who are we as knowers and what is our relationship with what can be known? This then is our epistemology. And based on our ontological and epistemological choices, how can we then find that out, this knowledge that we think we can know? This then is our methodology. So here's one example. If I believe that there is a real world, but that this is socio-historically and socio-culturally contingent, right? That the world we know is both natural and social, and our knowledge of it is mediated through who we are, the time we live in, and so on. This then would be what I think the world is like, right? This would be my ontology. So this means, in terms of how we can come to know the world, that I can't go looking for one objective truth. There are no pre-existing facts out there that if I design the right kind of study, I can just come to know and these will be the truth. And I, as a researcher, cannot be impartial or neutral because I am part of the socio-historical and socio-cultural context that I'm doing my research in. So I can create knowledge, but I also have to be very aware of particular kinds of socio-historical and socio-cultural contexts that already exist, gender, socio-economic status, and so on. I can't just come to know anything, but I also can't come at the world as if it's already existing objectively and all I have to do is find out about it. So because I have a particular ontology, it limits my, my epistemological choices. And then these two choices of ontology and epistemology further limit my methodological choices. I can't have a pre-test and post-test research design because I'm not testing objective knowledge. I also can't completely come at this as a relativist constructivist because I don't believe you can know anything you want. Not everything is truth. There, there is a basis for judgment um, of better and worse or more explanatory and less explanatory truths that I think I can find out. So 
I'm going to probably choose some kind of qualitative research design, but I'm going to think very, very carefully about my own positionality and the kinds of methods I can use to find out what I want to find out. So ontology, epistemology and methodology are connected and your research paradigm and the methods you choose to use depend on this paradigm or worldview, but they also depend on the research questions that you're asking, which are affected by this worldview and your disciplinary norms. This is just a little um, drawing I drew to kind of think about epistemological and ontological choices and how when you lock yourself into particular kinds of ontological choices, you limit the epistemological choices you can make and then you further limit the methodological choices you can make. And this was based on my reading of both the Grant and Giddings paper and the Guber and Lincoln chapter, which are available to you in the course site. So your belief system or your worldview shapes what you think your reality is and what you can know about it. It shapes your relationship with knowledge and inquiry as a researcher, and it shapes your ways of creating a research project or process that can help you create or discover valid knowledge. So obviously, it's going to shape the kinds of research questions you ask and the kinds of research problems you pose. So for now, I'd like you to pause this and set your timer on your phone or your watch for six minutes. And I'd like you to take out, you can type this or you can handwrite in your, in your research journal or on a piece of paper. For six minutes, what do you think the world is like? What do you think truth is? And how do you think you come to know it? What do you think your relationship with knowledge is as a researcher? So in other words, think a bit about your ontology and epistemology, but don't be too put off by those big words. What you're really looking for are what is your understanding of what the world is like? What is your understanding of how you can come to know that world and what your role as a researcher is? And then we can start thinking a bit about how would you design a research project then that fits in, that's influenced by that paradigm. If you like, you can also um, flip back a couple of slides um, to remind yourself what these things are and then pause the video here and write for six minutes about these things, just free write. Right, so now you've come back from your free writing and now we have to think a bit about research problems and research questions because these are connected to our approach to doing our research. What is the right shape and size problem and questions for the project you are doing? Masters, PhD, perhaps a postdoctoral project at some point. You need to be able to think about these kinds of things. How will you answer this question? What data are you going to need to answer this question? And can you get that data? See, it's all very well and good asking a very interesting, sexy question, for example, about survivors of um, sexual assault, if you're doing particular kind of gender studies or sociology research, or asking about whether or not refugees feel um, certain things about the state or certain things about charity or certain things about NGO work. But can you talk to refugees? Will you be allowed? Will you get ethical clearance to do that? Will they talk to you? Can you actually get permission to talk to survivors of sexual assault? How will you do that? That's very high risk research. So you can ask lots of different kinds of questions, but you can't necessarily actually follow up on those questions to answer them. So you need to think not only in terms of your ontology, epistemology, your research questions, your ideal approach, you also need to think very pragmatically about your research problems. So is it manageable? Is it viable? If you were doing a two year MA, can you do this research within two years? If you were doing a three or four year PhD, can you do this research with the time and the money or the other kinds of resources that you have available to you? Is it, if it's going to involve travel, can you travel, for example? Is this research problem clear? Is it cleverly and closely supported by existing research in your field? Is it focused? Is it about one thing and not four or five different things? These are the kinds of things you need to think about. So you can also, um, on your own or with a peer or two over the next few days, you can think a little bit about these three research questions, for example. And you can critique them with some of the considerations in mind. How would you do this research? 
is this research supported by existing research in the field? Is this a focused question or would it might, might it lead to a much larger project than, for example, one MA or one PhD? Or is it perhaps too limited? Might it not even lead to an MA or a PhD? You can pause the video here and think about some of these things, or you can think about your own research questions here. Often we have sub-research questions in a master's or PhD study. We have a main or central question we're asking, and then we have sub-questions. And if these are necessary, what's really important is that all of the research questions you write, if you have one main and three or four sub-questions, these must all contribute to a single golden thread for one study. The sub-questions unpack or give detail to the main question. They do not create new questions. So if, for example, you had a main question that was asking, to what extent does the media influence people's decisions to support or reject Black Lives Matter? A sub-question might be, what kinds of media are most dominant in um, the protest um, coverage? You might have a sub-question that asks, what is Black Lives Matter and how can we understand this movement? Those questions would unpack this main question. They wouldn't add new questions to your project. So to close off on this one, first material, you need to begin to think about whether you can actually get the data you need. You can also begin to think about what methodology and methods will be needed. And if you're doing, for example, interviews or surveys, who will you interview? Who will you survey? How will you get access to them? You need to think about the context for the study and where it fits into the field and also your real life or real world context. Do you have access to it? Can you actually get to this place where you need to do this research, whether it's online, in an archive or out in the world, in the field? And then you need to think about ethics and feasibility. Is your research ethical? Do you need all the data that you're thinking of collecting? What data do you most need? And all of these questions and the answers that you provide need to be thought of with your approach in mind. What do you think the world is like? How do you come to know the world and what is your role as a researcher? And then how do you design a study that enables you to get the right data to answer your research problems and questions?